look at the missionary problem, this problem as we know it today is really about 50 some odd years old in its present form. That is taking Christianity, dressing it up to look Jewish, and presenting it to the Jewish community. Now, I don't think I would surprise anybody here if I told you that Christians have always wanted Jews to become Christian. So while Christians have always wanted Jews to become Christian, the method that they're using today, groups like Jews for Jesus, taking Christianity, dressing it up to look Jewish, calling their pastors, rabbis, their congregations, synagogues, wrapping themselves in talesim, singing Hebrew songs, and telling the Jewish community that it's the most Jewish thing in the world to believe in Yeshua or Jesus. That methodology is only about 50 years old. But that methodology has worked perhaps far beyond their wildest dreams. We frequently hear that they've converted more Jews in the past 19 years than they have in the past 19 centuries. It's not clear as to uh, who originally came up with that quote, us or them, but uh, they love to quote it, and I don't have any problem quoting it back, because it's probably very, very true. But this missionary movement, which started primarily in North America, and primarily in the United States, has now been exported all over the world. In 1978, there were approximately 20 Hebrew Christian congregations in North America. Today, as we look around, there are over 400 Hebrew Christian congregations in North America alone. There are over 100 of these congregations in Eretz Yisrael. They produced a book in 1999, Facts and Myths About the Messianic Congregations in Israel. And this book lists congregation after congregation. And we know that there are even more there now. That is, by the way, combined, if you combine the number of conservative and reform congregations in Israel, that far out exceeds the number there. And then we turn to the former Soviet Union. The former Soviet Union has become a magnet for the missionaries. When the gates opened up, the missionaries flooded in. We have been using a figure of somewhere around 38 to 50 Hebrew Christian congregations in the FSU, but unfortunately that number is wrong, dead wrong. I came back from Moscow in May where I had the opportunity to present a program on the missionaries to leaders of 40 different Jewish communities around the FSU, and we did a survey. There are over 100 congregations in the Ukraine alone. We estimate that there may be another 75 to 150 congregations in the rest of the FSU. The number is outstanding, unbelievable, and they are growing by leaps and bounds. Christian missionaries are literally tripping over themselves to get to Russian Jews. And while they are increasing the numbers of the congregations in the FSU, they are not ignoring Russian Jews wherever they may be, whether it's here in Toronto, in the United States, and particularly in Eretz Yisrael. They're using whatever method they can possibly devise to reach out and ensnare the Russian Jews in their programs. And they're succeeding. In fact, the largest number of the Hebrew Christian congregations in Eretz Yisrael are made up of former Russian Jews. But this is a worldwide pro problem. And it's a problem that, as I indicated, has been exported from primarily the United States. The United States gave all sorts of wonderful things to the world. This is not one of them. We've noticed an increase in South America, which seems to be the next target for the missionary groups. And in fact, we are tracking 
over 900 U.S.-based and North American-based missionary groups that have as their agenda the same agenda as Jews for Jesus. And when you look at the response of the Jewish community, it pales in comparison. These groups are spending big dollars as well. Last year, Jews for Jesus had a budget of somewhere between 12 and 13 million dollars. That's American. You're going to have to help me with Canadian. I'm sorry. But Jews for Jesus is one group out of over 900 that we're aware of. Chosen People Ministries, over seven million dollars. Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry, five million dollars. And by the time we finish adding up all of the money that these groups are spending in their efforts to convert Jews, we estimate that each year they're putting forth $270 million in that effort. And figure it out. What's the price of a Jew? In 1978, we estimated that there were maybe 10,000 Jews involved in this movement. Today, that number is over 250,000. So they're succeeding. And when we look at that, and when we look at the uh, response of the Jewish community, whether it's from Jews for Judaism or Torah Life and Living, and believe me, Aaron knows that there are few groups out there that are working to try and combat the efforts of these groups, it seems almost insurmountable. It seems extremely frustrating. And if I can, I'd like to... uh, tell you a short story. It seems that uh, there was this little boy who lived by the sea and he heard that the following day there was going to be an extremely low tide. And he knew that when the tide goes out that the starfish become stranded on the beach. And this little boy loved starfish. And he wanted to do something for these starfish. So he got up real early the next morning. He goes down to the beach. And as he starts to walk along, he sees a starfish. He picks it up and he throws it into the water. And he walks a little bit further. He sees another starfish. He picks it up and he throws it into the water. And there's a man watching this little boy as he's walking down the beach, picking up starfish and throwing them into the water. And the man walks over to him and he says, what are you doing? And the little boy explains about the low tide. And the man says, I can't believe you're doing that. I mean, just look down the beach in this direction. Look at all the starfish. And then turn around and look at all the starfish down the beach in this direction. You can't possibly, even if you work all day, you can't possibly make a difference. Little boy thinks about it. Scratches his head. And he reaches down and picks up a starfish. and throws it into the water. And he turns to the man and he says, I made a difference to that one. And so Jews for Judaism, in spite of what seems like overwhelming odds, we continue to make a difference as we reach out to the people who are ensnared by these missionary groups. But even before they become ensnared, The programs that Jews for Judaism has developed, the educational preventive programs that we have taken around the country and around the world, will be meeting, for example, in August with leaders of Hillel, over 200 leaders of Hillel from across the former Soviet Union. Rabbi Kravitz, Rabbi Skobak, myself, have been throughout South Africa, Rabbi Skobak and Rabbi Kravitz have been to Australia, and we've been numerous times to Eretz Yisrael to do preventive programming to let the Jewish community know 
that there is a problem out there. Many people don't believe that this is a problem until it hits them. Well, I can assure you that with the growth rate in this movement, very, very shortly, there is going to be very few families out there who will not be touched by this problem. And we want to see if there's something that we can do to prevent it, to prevent more heartache for families in the Jewish community. We've introduced some rather innovative programs. In the Baltimore office, we developed a program called CPR for the Jewish soul, community prevention and response, in which we enter into an, to a Jewish community for a week to two weeks, and we do extensive programming throughout the entire community, not just one lecture, and not in just one place, but in every segment of the Jewish community, so that this message, that there is a Jewish response, that there is a good reason why for the past 2,000 years, Jews have said no to Jesus, that that information gets to every segment of the Jewish community. And the program has been very, very well received across the United States and even in South Africa. We'll be introducing this fall a program that we call JTTV, modeled after uh, MTV. It's our outreach to Jewish youth on a, um, I guess, kind of a, a hip way of reaching the youth, something that hopefully they can connect with. And through cyberspace and our extensive website and the new website at JTTV, we connect with Jewish town meetings, some of them held in conjunction with the CPR program that kids in their teens, prior to their reaching college, can relate to, with information that they can relate to, something that is speaking to them, something that hopefully will be useful to them and hopefully will keep them connected to the Jewish community. And of course, Jews for Judaism has been at the forefront of providing material in Russian around the world to combat the missionaries. The uh, booklet that you picked up outside, Jewish Responses to the Missionaries, is also available in Russian. We also have Michael Skobak's take and the only video on this subject in the Russian language, and that information has been made available worldwide. There's a cute little story about the first time that Rabbi Skobak went to Russia. And this was after his tape had received rather wide distribution there. And he was doing a program for some people in Moscow. And when he was introduced, several people got up and complained and screamed rather loudly, that's not Rabbi Skobak. And of course, we were a little confused because we've known Michael for many years. <laughs> but it seems that this particular tape had made its way to uh, some of the far reaches of the former Soviet Union. And the person that we had record the tape, the translation of it, was female. <laughs> and so they were expecting a female Rabbi Skobak. <laughs> Fortunately, we were able to convince them that this was the real, the real item, and uh, his reputation has spread since then, in spite of the fact that the tape is recorded by somebody who's female. In addition to uh, the efforts that Jews for Judaism is making, there are efforts that you as a community can make. Because, quite honestly, we can't do this alone. We need your help. As you can see from the people that Julius introduced, there are a few of us. And clearly, not enough to go around. In spite of the fact that we have offices across the U.S., Canada, South Africa, and a task force in Australia, when we look at just one of those groups, remember Jews for Jesus? I'm sure you've heard of them. Jews for Jesus has a full-time staff of over 150 people. And that's just one group. So we need your help. In fact, all of you need to be Jews for Judaism. All of you need to get the message out 
that there are organizations out there that can help in response to the Jewish communities. But even more than that, repeatedly when we ask people how they got involved or why they got involved, one of the answers that ranks fairly high up there is because they made an effort to connect to the Jewish community, but they found the Jewish community too cold, too distant, unfriendly, not welcoming. And I know that it's not happening in your synagogue or your neighborhood, but I can tell you that unfortunately this is a reputation that the Jewish community around the world has. And it's something that we, each one of us, can do something about. I had the opportunity to take my son to a small private college in New England when we were looking for school for him, and we stepped into a synagogue for Monday davening, and the place was jam-packed. There must have been 12, maybe 13 people there. <laughs> and at the end of davening, before we had even put away our tefillin, the place emptied out, and not one person, not one single person, said one word to either one of us. And I can tell you it's been a tremendous experience here in Toronto the last two days because in the two synagogues that we were in, just about everybody came over to ask us who we were, what we were doing, and to welcome us. But we need to extend that effort throughout the entire Jewish community to make the Jewish community a warm, welcoming, friendly place, a place where Jews want to be, a place where Jews feel welcome and at home. Because I can guarantee you that if we don't do it, the missionaries will. It's just something very small, but it's a start. It's something that each and every one of you can do to help in this effort to get the word out that the Jewish community is a place for Jews and that Jews for Judaism is a place that you can go for Jewish answers to the information, the misinformation that the missionaries are spreading. Thanks very much.